This is Common Core State Standard Support video in mathematics. The standard is 308.7. This standard states fluently multiply and divide within 100 using strategies such as the relationship between multiplication and division. For example, knowing that 8 times 5 is 40, one would know that 40 divided by 5 is 8. Or use properties of operations. By the end of grade 3, know from memory all products of two one-digit numbers. So the focus of this standard is to fluently multiply and divide within 100. The goal is that by the end of grade 3, students should know from memory all products of two one-digit numbers. Now this automatic recall is vital for procedural fluency. If they don't have these multiplication facts down, committed to memory, it's really going to bog them down in mathematics in the future. So very, very important. Now realistically, for whatever reason, some students really struggle with this. And as teachers, there is no magic bullet. Now memorization is no guarantee of understanding. Students can memorize stuff, but they still may not have a clue what they're doing or what it means. Instead, it's really important that they understand because this facilitates the memorization. It'll make it a lot easier if they really understand the concepts. So what we need to do is focus on understanding multiplication conceptually. And this, coupled with properties of operations, will empower students and give them alternative pathways to the desired goal. Okay, so this idea of understanding multiplication conceptually. Well, first of all, as far as the definition, what is multiplication? Now, a lot of us were taught that multiplication is repeated addition, but if that's our definition, that falls way short. It really is insufficient. If we go to the Common Core document, and we can find it uh, at this website, on page 21, there is a summary of multiplication, and it focuses on this idea of equal-sized groups. So a much better definition of multiplication is that it is repeated addition, but it's based on the use of equal-sized groups. And this is important because by defining it that way, it enables us to make some connections, especially between multiplication and division. Because defining it as just repeated addition leaves us this big river or whatever in the middle and there's no way to cross and connect the two. The equal size groups is important because it serves as the bridge that connects these two ideas of multiplication and division. So along that line, making these connections, well, how are multiplication and division connected? And a related question would be, how are multiplication and division the same? Which is really an easier question than how are multiplication and division different? Okay, now at this level, the typical context would be one where you would have a certain number of groups of a constant equal size that would constitute a total quantity. Continuing on, Again, we have a certain number of groups of a constant equal size that constitute a total quantity. Now, let's say we have eight groups of seven each. That would be our total of 56. Now, at this stage, this would be considered a multiplication problem. Eight times seven equals what? And then, these next two situations in the blue font would be considered division context. In this case, the first one, we know the total is 56. Uh, we know that we want the size of the sets to be 7. We're looking for the number of groups that that would uh, constitute. Uh, over here, we have a total of 56, and we know we have a certain number of groups, in this case 8, so we want to know what would the size of the groups need to be. Now notice that in all of these scenarios, whether you, you're thinking of it as multiplication or if you're thinking of it as division, Notice that we still had the same three things involved. We had so many groups of an equal constant size and a total quantity. Now notice that for multiplication, we were looking for the total. And for division, we knew the total and we were either looking for the number of groups or the size of the groups. So multiplication and division are very similar because in context at this level, it involves the same things. It involves a certain number of groups of a constant equal size that constitute a total quantity. 
So really the only difference between multiplication and division is what you know and what you don't know. So in the case of multiplication, you know the size of the groups and the number of groups, you're looking for the total. And in division, you know the total and you're looking again for either the size of the groups or the number of groups. So again, what makes multiplication and division the same is that it involves the same three components and the only thing that makes them different is what you know and what you're looking for. Now let's look at this idea of representation. 8 times 7 being 56. Now is 8 the number of groups and 7 is the size of the group or is it reversed? Is the 8 the size of the group and the 7 the number of groups? If you do research, there's no national consensus. There's no d definite uh, answer out there that says one way or the other is correct. Now, standard 308.1 does speak to the interpretation of products of whole numbers and states that something like 8 times 7 should be interpreted as 8 groups of 7. So that's the way that we're going to approach it, where the first number tells us how many groups and the second number will tell us the size of the group. Now that interpretation parallels standard English usage and it leads to the flexible perspective of 8 times 7 as 8 sevens. Uh, let's go into this a little bit deeper. In standard English we might have something like 8 bears where the rule is, okay, we have the adjective here followed by the noun. Now interpreting the 8 times 7 as 8 groups of 7 each parallels this so that we eventually will see 8 times 7 as 8 sevens. So again, it makes sense and this will also help algebraically down the road because when students hit something like this, then they'll also interpret that not just as eight times y, but really as eight y's. Now, why memorize? Students need some motivation. Well, let's say you gave them a bunch of blocks like this. It's going to take the students some time to count by ones to get to the total of 21. Counting by ones you know, can be a lot of trouble and pretty slow process. But let's say they organize those blocks into three groups of seven each, which would be 21. So rather than count by ones, here they're counting by sevens, and knowing the multiplication fact three times seven is 21 will really help them out. Other students might think a little bit differently and come up with seven groups of three, which is still going to be 21. Now when your students compare what they did, they'll see this, that hey, three groups of seven and seven groups of three are the same because in each case we got 21. Three groups of seven is 21, seven groups of three is also 21. Now 21, that's not a whole bunch, but let's say you gave them 72 blocks. They'll start to get the message that, man, if they have to take the 72 and count them one by one, that's a lot of trouble. But if they take them and organize them into say A groups of nine, then they'll automatically know, hey, that's 72. Or some other students might do nine groups of eight, which of course is still 72. So again, motivation there because it will save them a lot of trouble.